Firstly, I want to start this video with a sincere apology. In my previous video, I compared the Space Shuttle launch costs to the launch costs that SpaceX had contracted with NASA for. And as many, many Musk fans pointed out, I didn't adjust the Space Shuttle launch costs for inflation. This was clearly a serious error on my part that completely changes the conclusion. And I want to deeply apologize to anyone who might have been misled by this. This serious lapse is no doubt the reason that the video got such a poor rating. I have no excuse for this. Nah, <laughs> those were the inflation adjusted launch costs, you muppets. But spoilers, if you have to invent alternative facts because it challenges what you believe to be true, you, sir, are every con man's wet dream. Today, we're going to take a look at the Dunning-Kruger Pride Parade that is your average Musk fan's defense of SpaceX. I mean, even when you have the NASA payload specialist and space station engineer saying that his costs to orbit went up when they started using SpaceX, SpaceX fans are convinced that the opposite is true, that SpaceX isn't just cheaper than everyone else, it's much cheaper. How far into the land of delusion do you have to be to still argue at this point that it's my fault for um, not including inflation? Uh, what were the space shuttle numbers again? Oh, they were in 2012 dollars. Well, the SpaceX contract that I was comparing it to was in 2008 dollars. But curiously, there weren't hordes of SpaceX fans complaining how unfair and disingenuous I was by not increasing the uh, SpaceX numbers to be in $2012 for a fair comparison. And you know why I didn't do that? Because it won't make any bloody difference. Remember, the discussion that we're having here is whether Elon Musk has actually made things about 10 times cheaper and how credible his claims are that he's going to make it another 100 times cheaper on top of that. And yeah, spoiler, Elon Musk fans, if you're haggling over whether he's actually made it 10% or 20% cheaper, as Load thought it really important to do with some sort of knockdown argument, congratulations, you've just agreed that Musk hasn't done anything revolutionary. Yeah, there's a reason why Elon Musk fans got voted the most annoying on the internet. You know, it's this sort of rose-colored glasses that they view everything that Elon Musk does with. I mean, it's not like Elon Musk has a habit of promoting vaporware or anything. Well, no, that's that's not entirely justified. I mean, I was completely inspired when he sent a propulsively landed dragon capsule to Mars in 2018. That's three years ago now. He was propulsively landing dragon capsules on Mars. SpaceX founder Elon Musk tweeted out Wednesday that he's hoping to land one of his capsules on the surface of Mars in May of 2018. Hmm. That's, that's, that's not that far away. No. Big announcement that he's got set for next month, I believe, the Red Dragon spacecraft to go on man to Mars also in 2018. What can uh, oh, and, and we're going to try to send something to Mars on every Mars rendezvous from here on out. So uh, Dragon 2, which is a propulsive lander, uh, we plan to send to Mars in, um, in, in a couple of years and, uh, and then do probably another Dragon mission in 2020. In fact, we want to establish a steady cadence that there's always uh, a flight leaving, like a train leaving the station. Um, with every Mars rendezvous, we will, be trans we will be sending a Dragon, at least a Dragon to Mars. That's amazing. Elon Musk was going to send missions to Mars in 2018. Well, let's check the missions to Mars and see how he's doing, shall we? Well, he's right that there has actually been a steady cadence of missions to Mars uh, roughly every two years when the planets get close together. So in 2016, uh, Europe sent a couple of missions to Mars. And in 2018, there was a NASA mission to Mars called InSight. Ha! Huh, that's odd. Someone seems to have forgotten to put in the uh, Dragon capsule of SpaceX going to Mars in 2018. Well, maybe it's just an oversight. Let's see what he's done in 2020. Well, there have been three missions to Mars now. There's the one from the United Arab Emirates. There's one from China. 
and of course the Perseverance rover that has just landed. Ha! Huh. Again, someone seems to have forgotten the propulsively landed Dragon capsule going to Mars from SpaceX. And even more bizarre, none of these missions seem to have been launched by SpaceX. I thought SpaceX were like 10 times cheaper than everyone else. Your one cognitive surplus was not unique in expressing this opinion, that I just assumed that SpaceX was doing it cheaper. <clears throat> and not telling anyone about it. Yeah, <laughs> That's, that's one of the reasons why this all falls apart. Then pricing it to the market rather than to their costs. Why undercut the Russians by half when you only need to undercut by 10% to get the contract? Yeah, it doesn't seem to work that way in reality. Yeah, maybe for reasons like if you've spent $2.5 billion making a very sophisticated Mars rover, maybe you don't want to fly on Spirit Airlines. Anyway, where were we? Ah, yes, Elon Musk sending his propulsively landed Dragon capsule to Mars in 2018. Why, that can't be right. I remember SpaceX's tweets clearly showing the Red Dragon capsule would be landing on Mars. I remember seeing their beautifully rendered animations how, of how it would all work so perfectly. Oh, wait, hang on. That's right. Beautifully rendered animations. One of the largest red flags of bullshit merchants. But propulsive works um, anywhere. So, so Dragon should be capable of landing on any uh, solid or liquid surface in the, in the solar system. On Dragon, um, you know you can count on uh, a ship that's going to transport something on the order of, of um, at least a, uh, two or three tons of useful payload to the surface of Mars. Wow, that's a strong case for propulsive landings that they can land anywhere in the entire solar system. And they've now had over five years to work it all out with. They must be really good at this by now. You know what would be really kind of humiliating is if the Dragon capsules now used a method for landing that was worked out over 50 years ago by people with slide rules. Yeah, I can't but out feel that I've seen this all somewhere before in some archaic, grainy, vintage film shot a long time before I was born. In fact, the inform factor, the Dragon capsule is basically a clone of the command module. Again, a 50 odd year old space vehicle. Except, of course, the command module could take you to the moon, yeah, food, water, all that sort of thing for a couple of weeks. It was capable of navigating on its own and, if necessary, completing its mission on its own. When you look at the interior of the Dragon capsule, you get the feel of an oversized Coke can. A very, very Spartan oversized Coke can. Yes, yeah, so that's, that, that's part of the reason why we designed Dragon 2 to be a propulsive lander. Is As a propulsive lander, you can, you can go anywhere in the solar system. Um, so you could go to the moon, you could go to, well, anywhere really. Um, whereas say, if something relies on parachutes or wings, any place that doesn't have a dense atmosphere, you can't use parachutes. Yes, they scrapped the idea of propulsive landing. So even if Musk could now send a Dragon capsule to Mars, he couldn't land it there because there's not enough atmosphere to land it there. Well, I suppose he could send a Dragon capsule to Mars, although he, all he would achieve by doing it is giving Mars a new crater. You know, these grandiose promises with later working out that actually that might not be possible all sounds kind of familiar. Like in the white paper. We can read on page 55 of the white paper. All hail to the white paper. Where he proposed having a hyperloop that ran on some futuristic aerodynamic levitation. But it would be for, for a fifth mode of transports. I have a name for it. 
neighbor, which is called the Hyperloop. And it was all going to be super easy to do. It was going to be more efficient than planes. It was going to be cheaper than planes. And best of all, it really, really wasn't going to be that difficult. <laughs> but it's really not that hard. It still sounds pretty complicated, Elon. It's like a tube with an air hockey table. It's really, I swear, it's not that hard. <laughs> Just a year or so after the uh, white paper was published, Elon Musk was asked whether he favored electromagnetic levitation or aerodynamic levitation. Which one do you prefer? Still the air readings or do you go with magnet? Uh, okay, that's a, that's a good question. So, uh, you know, the... <clears throat> a couple of minutes later. Um, so, I'd probably advocate um, wheels and... Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> I swear, it's not that hard. <laughs> I'm a common, or maybe I'm a god Zooming around the planet in my hyperlooping pond he claimed to have revolutionized tunnel digging, where in reality, his tunnel digging costs were almost exactly the same as everyone else's. It took him 10 years to increase the energy capacity of a battery by 50%, by making it 50% bigger. There might even be some Elon Musk fans out there who still believe that he actually founded Tesla and PayPal. Mm, no. But I'll leave you to watch the Common Sense Skeptic videos on that. Yeah, with a track record like that, it's stunning that anyone would defend him at all. Let alone there to be an army of people who will vigorously defend him. So the Musk fans had three main grievances that I didn't factor in inflation when comparing the shuttle launch costs to those of SpaceX, which was a terrible lapse of judgment that just totally discredits you from the start. I mean, your, your, your career is over. Yeah, if I had a nickel for every time I heard that. The fact that I did use the inflation adjusted numbers didn't seem to bother them at all. But I suspect that facts don't greatly matter to these people. Here is a typical exchange. If you torch the data long enough, it will confess anything. The bias is real with this one. And the main utter fail, he ignored inflation. You serious? That's a face palm. I assumed that correction could be assumed from him. My God, this is embarrassing. Yeah, it certainly is, Cassia. Cool, let's take a look at this SpaceX price to orbit, shall we? So they're shipping up 20 tons in this contract for $1.6 billion. That works out at about $80,000 per kilo. Just a tad more than SpaceX's advertised price. But here we're comparing the price of cargo to the International Space Station. So we're going to do that for the shuttle as well. Well, there's some numbers for that a couple of years ago that said for the space shuttle, this cost about $270,000 per kilo. So that would make it about three times more expensive to fly a kilo up on the shuttle than a kilo on SpaceX. Wow, that's cute. And this other study also found the exact same thing. And again, before you dance a happy little jig, let me remind you that those are the prices for getting a shuttle which has both cargo and people on it. And you're comparing that to SpaceX's price for just cargo. Which is why you had NASA payload specialists saying that their costs actually went up when they went over to SpaceX because human rated launches are a lot more expensive than just putting kilograms into orbit. Which brings us on to the second most vocal grievance from the Elon Musk fans, which is apparently I didn't know that the Falcon was human rated. Even though in that very video where they were saying that I didn't know the Falcon was human rated, I discussed the human rated launch costs for Falcon versus other space vehicles. So Kevin says, saying Falcon 9 is not a human rated while showing a picture of Falcon 9 with dragon on top. Nice. Might not be the sick burn that you think it is though, Kevin. You see, whilst it's true that some Falcon missions are human rated, not all Falcon missions are human rated because there's no point in human rating a mission if you're not going to put people on it. 
And let's go over why that would be. You see, in the original video, I went through and showed that the average cost of a seat on the Falcon 9 to orbit was about $50 million-ish. And if you say your average person is 100-odd kilos, then that means that you're paying about $500,000 to orbit. Well, that just seems a little bit higher than the $2,000-odd that SpaceX claim that they're launching stuff for now, doesn't it? Which brings us on to the last of the grievances of the Elon Musk fans, which was that he really is doing it loads cheaper. It's just he keeps charging people lots of money because he wants to make profit and he only has to undercharge relative to his competitors to still be the best in the market, which is awesome because... There are no public figures on this. You've got to go via the only numbers that are available, which are things like their contracts and were taken with a pinch of salt, the SpaceX numbers. Why taken with a pinch of salt? Well, you'll remember earlier that Elon Musk claimed that he was digging tunnels 100 times cheaper than anyone else in the world. You actually checked those costs for digging the tunnel versus everyone else's costs for digging tunnels and they were exactly the same as everyone else's. So Musk's got no problem in bogusly claiming he can do things hundreds of times cheaper, but he doesn't say that with his rockets. He doesn't say we do it hundreds of times cheaper than our launch costs. And if you take a look at their claimed costs about refurbishing their rockets, it's about comparable with running expendable rockets. That is, just like Musk learned about a parachutes and um, um, wheels. He's now learning that just because you can reuse a spacecraft doesn't necessarily mean it's cheaper. He's learning the lessons of the space shuttle. Now I made my first video on this back in 2016, at which point I was cautiously skeptical. The whole reusable rocket thing had been tried with the shuttle and didn't work out so well. So in 2016, when I made this, this is about the same time that Elon Musk was claiming that he was going to propulsively land a Dragon capsule on Mars in 2018. The quality of the Musk fans hasn't changed that much. Well, this is awkward. The third quarter of this video hasn't aged well. Actually, it's aged amazingly well. So yeah, this is impressive, but it should be kept in perspective as an incremental development in rocket design. And just like with other concepts of reusable spacecraft, it remains to be seen if this is going to be a profitable one. So in 2016, Musk is predicting that by now, they would have at least two propulsively landed Dragon capsules on the surface of Mars. Uh, Dragon 2, which is a propulsive lander, uh, we plan to send to Mars in, um, in, in a couple of years and, uh, and then do probably another Dragon mission in 2020. In fact, we want to establish a steady cadence that there's always uh, a flight leaving, like a train leaving the station. And he's been fantasizing about making launch costs hundreds of times cheaper for probably 10 years before then. And if we can get a co the cost of moving to Mars to be roughly equivalent to a median house price um, in, in the US, uh, which is around $200,000. Meanwhile, I'm sat there in 2016, skeptical about whether the whole reusable rocket thing can even hit the break-even point. In those four years, it's not that Musk just didn't send anything to Mars. They also scrapped the whole propulsive landing idea. Sorry, weren't those Musk fans just saying something about not aging so well? In the meanwhile, Musk's cost for launches over the next four years looked like this. Yes. Look, I couldn't find any decent breakdown of launch costs, but I did find this one from United Launch Alliance. And it feels to be in a, the right ballpark, which is give or take one third of the costs go to running the launch facility and the infrastructure and the personnel and all that sort of thing. Well, if this is true, then your SpaceX launch looks something like this. One third of it can't be reduced because that's what you've got to run anyway. And Musk says his second stage, which isn't reusable, is about 20% of the cost of the rockets or thereabouts. 
Even if you all you have to do is roll up and add more fuel to your rockets, you can only reduce your costs by about another 50%. And realistically, drone ships, shipping costs, transport costs, and people to run it all are not trivial costs, nor is checking that the booster is fit to fly again. And because reusable rockets only launch about 70% of the mass to orbit that expendable ones do, this means that if you actually get over the 70% line here at any point, that's not break even anymore. You're better off just using expendable rockets. Look, in science, we look for this thing called concordance, which is where you get multiple different lines of reasoning that end up independently in the same region. And if you get concordance from multiple lines of reasoning, you have more confidence in that conclusion. Half a dozen different lines of reasoning put SpaceX in the same ballpark as other human-rated vessels, and that reusability is not a magic bullet here. Certainly not the magic bullet that's going to make things a hundred times cheaper. Yeah, I'm sure, SpaceX is perfectly competitive, but it's not revolutionary. Flying dustbins really aren't that impressive. Yeah, they were doing that sort of thing 20 years ago with the DCX program. Meanwhile, some 20 years later, in Texas. Right on target, it's looking fantastic. It, Ignition number one, ignition number two, there's the flip. Yeah, there's the flip. Yes! Oh, uh -oh. God. Oh, God, no, no. Oh. oh, that was... Oh, my God. Yeah, it's interesting to have people excited about it, I guess, but honestly, I find the rockets that successfully land more impressive. And maybe the ones that actually do something, like maybe, for instance, land a state-of-the-art rover on another planet. But that takes perseverance. But until then, maybe a word of wisdom to the Elon Musk fans out there. Tell me some more how Elon Musk is the genius who invented the Hyperloop, the vertical takeoff and landing supersonic electric jet, the wheel the only man ever to have propulsively landed a dragon capsule on Mars twice. Your impotent outrage sustains me. So if you enjoyed that, drop a thumbs up on it. Uh, of course, make sure you share it with all your friends who are Elon Musk fans. And as ever, if you really enjoyed the work of this channel, you can support it directly through Patreon. And uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>